Welcome to Peak Worship. We're so excited that you tuned in today. Pastor Dan has a powerful word for you and we are believing and praying that it's gonna change your life. I want you to understand that we drive around and, and has anybody ever, maybe I should say not, but I know everyone's probably dro driven around town or, or you're out of town, you're traveling and you come to this motel or hotel, I don't know which one. One of them, the doors open out and the other one, the doors open in, something like that I've been told. I, anyway, I think, I think most of the people like motels or hotels or whatever. But anyway, you, you, how many times have you been there and you see this no vacancy sign? And when that sign's lit, there's no reason to stop. You can keep on going, amen? And I want to talk to you today about no vacancy. I think it's time as Christians we turn our no vacancy sign on. But before we go there, I, I want to talk to you about a helper. I was sitting with my son, Joshua. He's, he's, he's going to be six in October. He keeps reminding me that too. And he keeps reminding me that it's going to be a Legos um, birthday because, you know, it, he wants a Legos cake. But we're sitting there and he, he has this project. And what an imagination. An imagination that I never, ever want to destroy. But it's easy to destroy. But we're sitting there and we're, we're cutting boxes and I'm, I'm with the hot glue gun and he's saying take this little piece of paper and, and glue this here and I'm thinking man you know that once you push on that little piece of paper you know how hot that is on the other side right here on that finger but I, I'm just pushing them you know and, and he told me you know what daddy don't do that that you, daddy daddy I'm the designer and engineer you're the helper look up at Alma and I'm like do you hear that? Yes, yes, I did hear that. Yeah, he goes, so you just, you, you, you're just the helper. You, you, you do this, you glue this, I'm gonna tell you where to put this. And I, I'm thinking the whole time, you know, I, I love being his helper. I don't want anybody else to be his helper. I'm a jealous father, just as my father in heaven is jealous for each and every one of you. And I. And we're cutting, we're doing things. And he reminds me again, Daddy, you know, I, I just, you're, just, you're the helper. You're the helper. I need you to glue this. I, can you go ahead and finish cutting this? Can you do this? And, and I, I love the fact that I can sit there and we're gluing. I don't know what we're making. But then there's times that he gets things where he's trying, you know, and, and then as the helper, son, have you thought about doing this? If you do it this way, if you put it together this way, whether it's Legos or what, you know, you, you might be able to see it fits like, oh, daddy, you're so smart. You're so smart. You are so smart. Oh, man, it just makes you melt. It's like, oh, what can I go buy you now? Hallelujah. You know, I, he, know he knows how to work it. But you know, you're all oh, daddy. You're so smart. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But oh, here, let me help you. Oh, no, 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 no. No, I got it now. Thank you. You know, yeah, you're the helper. Remember, but it gives me an opportunity to guide him, direct him, to assist him. And, and as long as I do it in love and encouragement, I'll always be the helper. As long as I, I make sure that I don't get in too much of a way and, and, and judge and condemn and hate, as long as I make sure what I do is, is correct, he'll always want daddy as his helper. You know what that tells me? That when he's 17 and 18 and that girl breaks his heart, someone comes to him and offers him something that he shouldn't have. You know who's going to be the one set beside him? His helper. Daddy, is this right? No, no, no. Let me help you and guide you. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life, but let me help you and guide you. Let me direct you in love. There's going to be things that you're going to stumble, you're going to fall. Because unfortunately, we all do that. And all, unfortunately, sometimes, oh, my thick skull, there was things that my mom and my dad used to tell me. And I had to go experience for myself. But it's amazing to know that you have this helper. That you allow this helper in for wisdom, guidance, direction. It's amazing what a helper would do. Have you ever done a project by yourself and it's like, man, I just wish I had an extra set of hands. Oh my goodness. I've gotten myself into some, some trouble and you know, I just, I'll use this stage as an example, man. I, 
I had this great idea, but boy, when the Calvary came through that door, it's like, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, because it would have been several months before this thing would have been done. There's nothing better than a helper, but the helper with the right heart. See, it says in John chapter 14, verses 25 to 26, it says, these things have I spoken to you while I am still with you. This is Jesus saying this. You know, these things have I spoken to you while I am still with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that have that I have said to you. See, Jesus was telling these guys, you know, I, it's, it's good that I go. You don't need me here. I, I'm not omnipresent. You know, I, I, if I'm in the boat, I can't be in the town. If I'm in the town, I can't be in the boat. If, if I, I can't be on top of this mountain at the same time, but I, I'm going to go and do what I need to do. And then I'm going to send the Ruach HaKadosh, which is Holy Spirit. I'm going to send Holy Spirit because Holy Spirit can be anywhere and everywhere. He's anything that you need. He's your helper. I, I need you to understand that He's your helper. He will guide you and direct you. Holy Spirit's part of the Trinity, the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. See, Jesus didn't even perform the first miracle until He was baptized in the Spirit and dwelled, fell down upon Him and in Him and through Him. He was baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit came down as a dove. It wasn't a dove, but Holy Spirit is precious. Holy Spirit's respectful. He's that helper. He's that buckler. He's that shield. See, we can turn to Holy Spirit as a helper. It should, you know what, should I do this in my life? No, I, I think there's another way. I think there's another route. I think, you know what? The, our Father in Heaven has another plan for you. Will you just, will you, you know, just as me, you know, telling Joshua, just as I was telling Joshua, you know, I think these Legos would go a little bit different here. I think we need to do, oh, that's a great idea, Daddy. You're so smart. We have this helper called Holy Spirit that we can turn to. Holy Spirit, should I buy this car? Holy Spirit, should I keep this truck? Holy Spirit, should I, I what, where do I, you know, don't, I don't know about you, but, I love Holy Spirit. I love the time with Holy Spirit. I love just getting in a room and being saturated by Holy Spirit. Crying and tears and snot flowing. I'm not a pretty sight, but boy, I, I feel so good inside. I'm, I'm, at, I'm at peace. I, I think you want a pastor that, that loves Holy Spirit, don't you? I think you want a pastor that, that allows Holy Spirit to guide and direct everything of his life. When you let Holy Spirit guide and direct you, you're going to swerve around some deadly curves that you would have crushed him. You're not going to sign some things that you should have, should not have signed. You're going to eliminate some friends that you probably shouldn't have. When you have Holy Spirit, you're going to be revealed that you know, you're loved no matter what. And God can't change that. God can't change that. He loves you. When we allow this helper to come in. I want to read to you what a helper is. It's an advocate, a person who acts as a spokesperson or a representative of someone else's policy, purpose, or cause, especially before a judge in a court of law. It even goes on within the Greek. One who is called to someone's, hmm, one who is called to someone's aid this helper isn't that what Jesus said I, I, I've got to go because I, 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 I'm going to send someone that's going to come and help he's going to aid you he, he, he's going to direct you he, he's going to guide you he, he wants the best for you because there's some other spirits out there that wants to see you devoured and ate up. There's some other things out there that wants to lead you the wrong direction. There's some other things out there that's going to get into your emotions and your feelings and lead you by that instead of, oh, what I, I want for you. And there's too many times that us as Christians, we don't turn to our helper. We, when we go to make a, a decision uh, or there's a situation in our life, how many times do we really sit back and, oh, let me just take a step back. 
Let me take a deep breath before I call my friend, before I call my spouse. Let me go right to my helper. How many times do we make decisions? Do we react without going to our helper? We're cut off on the road. And then the first thing that we do is, oh, we go right to anger instead of our helper. We go right to our past to blame our past. We go right to our excuses. We go right back to everything but our helper. See, until we get rid of excuses, nothing's ever going to change. Until we get back to where we get back to our helper, nothing's ever going to change in our life. And as Christians, we need to start going to our helper. The one that is our shield, our buckler, the one that can guide us, the one that's there for aid, the one that is our attorney. I, I, you know what? I, I want my attorney. I, I, want, I want Holy Spirit as my attorney. You know, let me just tell you, your honor... I know Satan's over here accusing them of that. I know, I know they lied. I know they gossiped. I know they did that. But let, let me just tell you, they admit their guilt and they repented and the price was paid on the cross. You have no authority over them, your honor. But what is given by our Father in heaven? I want that helper in my life. I want that helper to guide me and direct me. I want us to get in the habit of when we need something that we turn to our helper. I want whenever we are in our car, we just talk to our helper. Hey, man, we're going to have a great day today, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Lord, I'm having some problem raising my kids. How, how, how do I do this? Lord, there's a little bit of difficulty in my marriage. And instead of calling a bro or a girlfriend, we're gonna call on our helper. So that way our helper is gonna say, you know what? Divorce is not an option. Adultery, don't be looking over there. Don't be going over there. You know, I, uh, you know, you, you, you know I, your body is not your body. You know, communication is everything. We're gonna have this helper guiding us and directing us this helper to lead our life see too many times as Christians we try to do things on our own and I want to read this scripture because this is where I'm going this is where I'm going Luke 11 24 through 26 when the unclean spirit has gone out of a person it passes through waterless places seeking rest and finding none it says I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings seven other spirits more evil than itself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of the person is worse than the first. It even goes. It's so important that he does, God doesn't just say, Luke, I need you to write it. Matthew, I need you to write it down. And Matthew states it right here in, in chapter 12, the words of Jesus. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest, but finds none. Then it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes and it finds the house empty, swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings with it seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. So also will it be with this evil generation. What's the scripture saying? I'm glad you asked. Because there's too many times as Christians, instead of allowing our helper to come in, it, 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 have you heard of the word exorcist? Jesus is saying that the disciples came across some exorcists. You know, exorcism is, is where, where they're casting out demonic spirits out of this individual. There's a demonic spirit that, that is making this person flail and well all over. And there was false prophets. There was individuals that were trying to do things themselves, but not in the name of Jesus. And they see, they were, oh, let me just put it in perspective. See, they were trying to get over their alcohol addiction through their own ways. Oh, you know what? I can go ahead and buy the bottle because it's only going to sit in the counter because I have it under control. Because pride is in the mist. Oh, this depression, I have it down. Why do you think suicide is rampant? We just see all over Instagram where one of the chefs that was on TV, famous chefs, that he committed suicide. 
because of depression, because depression came in. Oh, you know what? Depression was in the midst. And, and see, it's so easy. As brothers in Christ, it says, come and reveal and, and talk to each other about your sins. You know, get prayer. Let the elders lay hands on you that you will be healed. But see, Satan will keep us isolated where we try to handle things ourselves. And see, we'll try to do it ourselves. And we think we're winning the battle. Oh, whenever they were casting out those, those exorcists, was, ex, was casting out those demons. Jesus was saying, it's just temporary. You're going to see it. They're going to be okay for a week or two. But after that, it's coming back and finding a place all kept up and swept up. How many times as Christians we've had that attitude? I've got this under control. And then three weeks later, that same problem that we thought we had under control has us buried and devoured. I'm depressed now. I have anxiety. I have worry. Porn pornographic material is worldwide. You, you, know, you know they said the pornographic industry is so huge. And the reason why I brought up that, you know, and so many times because that's throughout the newsletters of the, of the church leaderships that I'm reading. Pornography is growing and it's growing at an age that 10 year olds and 12 year olds. And it's important that we discuss it. It's important that we discuss it because 10 and 12 year olds are getting addicted to something that is free right there on their Google. And they say the pornography industry makes more money than the NFL, the Major League Baseball, the NBA, and the hockey all put together. Multi-billion dollars. NFL is a multi-billion dollar, what, that's some astronomical billions of dollars. But all the sports put together, pornography is larger, makes more money. But Jesus is saying, you know what, hang on. In a couple weeks, let's see how the individual is. How many times have we as Christians tried to do something on our own? Hey, I mean, I, I, man, I'm trying to lose weight again. Because I've done it on my own. And man, I last for a few months. I last for a few years. And the next thing I know, then boom, man, over time, this thing starts creeping in. And, I, I, and now, now, now I'm 10 additional pounds or 20 pounds. How about your alcohol addiction? You have it under control. But if you really admit it, it has you under control. How about your drugs? How about depression? It seems that whenever we think we have something under control, I have it. That's pride. All that is is arrogance. Now you're going to fall and you're going to stumble even greater because it's an illusion that Satan has. And that's what Satan's saying. You know what? I see what you see. But let me just tell you, that demonic spirit of lying, if you don't allow your helper, Holy Spirit, to do the work in you, then all you're doing is you're doing it in your own. And all you're doing is you're cleaning this temple. You're making a place that when that demonic spirit comes back, when that lying, that addiction, that depression, that anxiety comes back, it's gonna find a place all kept up where now it has rooms for seven more. But when we allow Holy Spirit to do the work, when we allow Holy Spirit, see it says in Ephesians 5.18, and do not get drunk with wine, for that is a debauchery. Debauchery is anything that pleasures the, 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 the flesh. That could be sex, that could be drugs, that could be alcohol, that could be your soap opera, that could be you know, your idolatry, that could be anything that comes in that is, forms an idol above God. For that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with Holy Spirit because when you allow your helper to come in, when you allow your helper to come in to work out the obesity, you, oh Lord, I, I need, when I turn that, you know what, Lord, there's times that mean I want to go grab me a Snickers bar. I want to eat the whole cake, not just a piece of cake. I want to eat the whole thing. Ah, but I have to turn to my helper. I need strength. Help me walk away. Help me walk away from this addiction. Help me, 
give me strength. Oh, Father God, give me a peace. For Father God, I'm in circumstances that I want to worry, but I don't want to worry. And instead of going to my checkbook, instead of going oh, to my finances, instead of going to my wife, instead of going to the house, instead of looking at all the bills or whatever that's going on in your life, I'm turning to the helper. Lord, uh, you have this under control. Jesus, you said you're my Jehovah Jireh. Oh, Father, God, give me the peace that I can sleep throughout the night. And when we allow the helper to come in and help us through these, oh, we can put the no vacancy sign on because when the demonic spirit comes back, there's no room in here because Holy Spirit dwells in this place. Oh, I might be messed up. I might be jacked up. I might have my issues or problems, but let me just tell you, I'm working this out with Holy Spirit. And when that demonic spirit, when it comes back, let me just tell you, there's no vacancy. You have to keep on going. Don't even knock at my door because lust is not even an option. Because when I feel that, I'm turning right to my helper. I'm getting right into the word. I I'm going to study it. I'm going to memorize scripture. I oh, that's why PDJ is very important. That's why it's very important that you pray each and every day. You have a relationship with God because when that demonic spirit comes back, oh, gossip comes back. Oh, I want to pick up the phone because sister, sister needs to know how messed up they are. Oh, but, oh yeah, I'll use the excuse that, oh, I'll just tell them everything and then all oh, we're going to do is just pray. Oh, the helper knows the heart. The helper can give you strength. When the suicide thought comes, instead of handling it with yourself, handle it with your helper, with Holy Spirit. So when the suicide comes back, knocking on the door. You can just yell through the door. Don't open the door. Yell through that door. Hey, hey, you see the no vacancy sign? No room in here. Holy Spirit lives in here. No anger here, Holy Spirit lives in here. No bitterness in here, Holy Spirit lives in here. No unforgiveness in here, Holy Spirit lives in here. And then when that, oh, on the other side of the door, when Satan says, how about your past? How about what you just did yesterday? How about you're defeated? How about there's no vacancy in here? Oh, you can't down me. Oh, you have, oh yeah, I know I used to lie. I know I used to be on drugs. I know I used to be in porn. I used to be down. I used to be depressed. I had anxiety. But let me tell you, the no vacancy signs on. There's no room in here. There's no room in this inn. I just shut the light off. No vacancy signs on. I'm filled with Holy Spirit, my helper. My helper is going to guide me and direct me. Does that mean I'm still going to struggle at times? Absolutely. But I'm going to turn to my helper. I'm going to turn to the one that I need to turn to. And he's going to help me. No vacancy, diabetes. No vacancy. I'm not accepting that. No vacancy, cancer. Nope, I'm not accepting that. There's nothing but healing. There's nothing but the Holy Spirit. No anxiety here. No, 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 no. You see the no vacancy sign? No vacancy signs on. Nope. No anxiety here. No depression here. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. I, I, yeah, I know I used to be a drinker. I know I used to be a drug addict, but you know, no vacancy here no more. Because you know what? I, I turned to my helper. When it shows up at the door, you need to instantly turn to your helper. And your helper will go out and fight the battle for you. Your helper will let the enemy know you won't even have to answer. You turn your, Lord, I need some help here. I, I need, and our helper, our buckler, oh, our shield, he'll step in. Oh, I've got this. Let me just tell you, Satan, uh, you, you, there's no vacancy here. You, you, there's no room here for you because you can't dwell with me. And let me just tell you, you've lost the battle and you've lost this temple because it was purchased by Jesus Christ. When you take those thoughts captive, what are you filling it with when you cast them out? Are you filling it with the Holy Spirit? Because let me tell you, if you try to do it yourself, jealousy will run your life, amen? Excuses will run your life. Oh, it's gonna get better when I get married. Oh, it's gonna be, get better whenever I get some rest. Oh, it's gonna be, get, get better whenever I get a job. Oh, really? Your job's gonna give you peace? Well, you, know, let, you should have peace throughout all your life. You shouldn't be worrying at all a peace that surpasses all understanding. You know, you can stand on God's word and, and not have any of that. I, there's no vacancy here for worry. There's no vacancy for lack. There's no vacancy for you, Satan. Nothing. Nothing of your schemes. Nothing you could say. There's no vacancy here. 
And we as Christians, we need to start turning our no vacancy sign on. And the only way you can turn your no vacancy sign on is to look for the helper and ask the helper to come in your life. Romans chapter eight, verse nine. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If in fact, the spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. I don't know about you, but that's good news. So those of you that want to look in the mirror and you don't see something that's beautiful and created incredibly wonderful, then you need to instantly, before you walk away from that mirror, you need to turn to your helper. Lord, I just, I want... Holy Spirit, help me to look in this mirror and see exactly what you see. Because my no vacancy signs on, defeat is not an option. Being overcome is not an option. Being conquered is not an option. Being an overcomer is an option. And when we turn to our helper, there's nothing better than a friend in your life that you, you could be so messed up, they're gonna correct you but they're going to love you and they're going to encourage you. You know what a pat on the back does? Let me just go by and pat you on the back. Man, great job. It just, whoo, yeah, I needed that. That's what Holy Spirit does. You're an overcomer. You're more than a conqueror. Now, this isn't the way you do this. I, I, you, let's do it this way. And it's okay. You can tell Holy Spirit, yeah, I'm the engineer. I'm the engineer. You're the helper. And Holy Spirit's going to sit right there. Yeah, I am. I am. I am. But I'm going to help you. I, that gut feeling, I, I'm going to put in there whenever you, you go to do something wrong. I, I'm going to go, oh, yeah, I'm going to be right there. I'm going to make you sick whenever you do do it. Because I love you. Because I want you on the right track. I want you on the right path. And the Lord is saying, you know what? I want each and every one of you to be able to walk out of this place today and turn your no vacancy sign on that your helper is in charge, that you turn to the helper for each and everything. If that chef and that actor, actress, and those that you know, commit suicide, if they would have just at that moment taken a deep breath and asked their helper, asked Holy Spirit to guide them and direct them. See, Holy Spirit, this is what Holy Spirit would have said. You're not a mistake. You're not an accident. I know what Satan's telling you but I have plans for you, plans to prosper you. Oh, I, I'm, I, I've got it taken care of. In fact, can I go ahead? Are you receiving me as your helper? Are you receiving? Because I want to go ahead and turn the no vacancy sign on. Oh, because I, I want to go ahead and you know what? I, I want to go ahead and guide you and direct you and help you through this. I, I know the mountain's right there. I know you, you, you don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up on the promotion. Don't give up on going to school. Don't give up on your marriage. Don't give up on a friend. Don't give up on a loved one. Because, you know, I, 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 I'm here. I, I'm here. I can make things happen. Don't give up. Because that, that is not the helper. That is Satan saying, you know what? You are not going to happen. This isn't going to work. And he wants you to give up in every area of your life. And Holy Spirit saying, no, 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 no. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. You are not an accident. You are an incredible creation of God. You have a purpose. You have a plan in your life. I can help you through this. We can get around the mountain or we can speak to the mountain and it has to be casted in the sea. But let me just tell you, I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to help you through it and can I, oh will you just lap me so I can turn that no vacancy sign on can you and that's what God's asking you today he wants to be your helper Holy Spirit does in every area of your life in every decision all the way to the point of what do I buy in the grocery store for my groceries what do I eat should I be drinking that how should I treat my neighbors? How should I love someone? Help me to love them. He wants to be in every area of your life. Will you let him in church? Will you let Holy Spirit, the helper come in so you can turn the no vacancy sign on? That worry doubts, no, 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 it's not here. Addictions, no, 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 it's at the door. 
if you're here saying, you know, I've got it all taken care of, let me just be real with you. I love you, but that's pride and arrogance. And if you always have an excuse for everything and it's never your fault, that's pride and arrogance. And I say this because it's easy to get it. And once you get pride, it's easy to harden your heart where you can't receive. And you'll never be able to put the no vacancy sign on because everything that you try to do on yourself is gonna come back with seven others. And you're gonna get worse and worse and worse to the point where you're gonna have to, oh, you're gonna have to sacrifice something. Will you allow Holy Spirit to come in to be your helper? So you can turn that no vacancy sign on. This is Pastor Daniel. I hope the message has touched you and I hope that, you know what, Holy Spirit's there tugging on your heartstrings. And I'm hoping that you are willing to make a decision to follow Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I know for me, it was a young child that I gave my heart to the Lord, but then, then I didn't live uh, my relationship for the Lord. I lived my relationship through my parents for the Lord. And then there was a time in my life where things just went wrong and went bad and, and the Holy Spirit was tugging at my heart and saying, hey, look, you know what, it's time. And I got on my knees, I cried out to the Lord and I made Jesus my Lord and Savior. And that was my relationship with Him. And I know He's calling you right now into a relationship. And I just wanna give you an opportunity to just enter in and give Jesus Christ your life and receive Him as your Lord and Savior. It's this simple. All you have to do is close your eyes and bow your head and say, dear Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to come into my heart and change my life and I surrender my will to you in Jesus' name. If you've said that prayer, I'm telling you, you are saved, you are on the way to heaven and he just wants you to live according to his word. So get into a church, start serving, get into the word of God and make a difference in your life. Hopefully you received a word from the Lord today. If you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, be sure to email us at admin at peak worship so that we can stay in contact with you. We want to make sure that you get plugged into a church in your area and we'll see you next time.